Assalamu alaikum dear viewers, peace be upon you all, welcome to our show discussing several aspects of Ashura that we can learn from. Today's topic, we're going to focus on the children that were present on the day of Ashura, the legacy they left behind, their role on the day and afterwards, and the lessons we can learn from them. To discuss this topic, we're going to have with us Sheikh Ali Marsh, we've got Sayyid Mohsin Shah, we've got Imran Datu, and we've got Tahir Adil to provide us with poetry as well. Sheikh, the, one of the magnificent things about the story of Ashura is the age range that was present from the six-month-old infant to the person who was elderly. And not just for the young people, I think there are several lessons we can learn as adults by the young people present on Karbala. Because as we've mentioned on different uh, episodes, even the young people showed a maturity that was above their years. Um, but going back before Ashura, what, why did Imam bring his children in the first place? Because I'm sure he would have thought and others would have thought, this is between me and, and the superpowers. Why get the children involved? A'udhu billah as al alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Children were brought in Karbala. Briefly, we can say that to uncover the true face of uh, Bani Umayyah and specifically Yazid a tyranny, that they did not only disrespect the, sa the sanctity of Ahlul Bayt as a household, السلام, but also the children, in a way that some of them were looted. On the day of, of Karbala, uh, the earrings were taken from their ears, yeah. and some of them were poked by the end of the, um, the spear, and some were lashed, and some, of course, were killed. And when Imam al-Hussein took his infant, the six-month infant, to the enemies in order to uh, be you know, the proof of Allah, you know, as, as a hujjah upon the enemies that and he said to them that if there's something done by the adults, then what is the guilt of this child? Then give him some water, which eventually killed this infant on the lap of his father. So they showed no mercy, uh, no humanity. Uh, they showed nothing in terms of respecting at least um, the sanctity of this household by leaving the children alone and not to kill them. But as one of them said from the enemy side, حتى لا يبقى منهم باقية. So none of their offspring will remain after mm -hmm. them. So they wanted to kill everyone, even the children. So no one would re remain after the, uh, the martyrdom of Imam Hussein Salaam Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will that he kept Imam Sajjad and some other children as well. Like Imam al-Baqir yes. we had narrations that he was there in Ashura, he witnessed Ashura, he was around the age of three or four, and he saw, and some of the narrations of the Karbala is by Imam al-Baqir So, yes, of course, uh, the presence of children is also by, by Allah's will. Mm. Um, Sayyid Muslim, looking at uh, that moment where Imam brings his children um, uh, from, from Mecca to, to Kufa and then to Karbala, I mean, we're looking at someone who knows that my children are also going to be slaughtered. If not slaughtered, taken captive afterwards, because he was informed about this. What brings Imam to actually 
make that step to bring the children because surely the easier and we would not excuse him either for leaving your children behind I'm, I'm sure he still would remain a great person the symbolic act of bringing the children how how was he able to do to do that well i'll ask you how was prophet ibrahim able to bring his son true to to be sacrificed on you know on, on that day and, and it's the same for i think for abu abdul al hussein um it's like he's got his sacrifice but he's also saying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not just me at my life i'm going to sacrifice i'm going to bring my you know my 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 children my nephews my brothers we, we are all here to sacrifice our lives for, for your cause you know and it clearly states and i think it's, it's charles dickens who, who who mentions this in, in his quote and on regards to karbala is that the fact that he brings his family and his yes. children shows that it wasn't a material a worldly a worldly yeah. affair that there was something a lot more higher to this so i think that's what really drove up about the mm -hmm. saying to bring everyone and also let's not forget it wasn't it, i don't think it's like, it's like this but it was like an open invitation yes he you know i mean he did speak to people in regards for support and and you know um, the kufans were there, there to show the support also when he left mecca, mm. medina for mecca when he left mecca for kufa and even you know on, on that day when everyone was killed we have the famous line he says is there anyone else there to aid me as in he still needs that support he still wants the support but also that he's all alone and that he's brought so many with him and so many have gone um so i think this is the the, the true um significance and also that this is the true uh message of imam hussein is not just that you know i'm giving up my life but I'm giving, I'm sacrificing my the, my beloved, yes. and also who is there to support me yes. as well. Um, Brother Tahir, um, when I think of some of the worst acts a human can do, um, I mean in the modern day, there's, there's for example two things that really make me upset: is attacking people in a place of worship, and the second one is harming a child. Yeah. Um, I'm sure many would 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 agree with me there. Um, now we know that on the day of Ashura, there were several children that were harmed. Uh, and if not harmed, they were killed from on Muhammad, from the infant, from the son of Imam Hassan uh, Qasim and also another son was possibly present too, um, whose, whose hand was cut. Um, which out of all these children, and then you've got, um, pardon me for forgetting, the, the daughters of Imam taken as captives afterwards. Uh, out of all these young people, which, which one of these stories breaks your heart the most? It's a difficult Very question. Very difficult um, me in particular uh, would be Raqaiya bint al Hussein, not because of her age uh, or who she was, but because of her relationship with her father. Yes. Because that's symbolised throughout the, uh, the, the the narrations that we have of how close she was to her father, how she would remember her father, and in the end, her demise was related to her relationship with her father. Mm -hmm. uh, so that particular story, that the story in particular, resonates uh, with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, like you mentioned, and to echo uh, Mohsen's points, um, sometimes you have to, you know, sacrificing yourself isn't enough. You sacrifice from what you love, mm. and that makes the value of the sacrifice even, greater. even yeah, even yeah. greater. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult because to think somebody was willing to sacrifice a child uh, for a specific message, it adds weight to it. The, like you said, the value of it is greater, but it's also testament on the enemies as well. They were willing to kill children and it's uh, for centuries to come people mm. realize you know even if they're confused about which side to take one side killed children yeah uh, so just balancing the humanity between On a the human two. level yeah, yeah. so it's mm. not just a political issue like some people would like to say you know you've got an issue with human life and not just human life children's lives were taken and that should be that should make it clear cut and I think at the end of the day that was part of the re uh, a small part of the reason why Mahsen took his children with him. Mm. Um, Brother Imran, looking at, um, again, the children, I think when uh, we're all adults in this room right now, and to take lessons or instructions from a child it requires a very big degree, degree of humility. Um, like when, when Jesus was born and announced that he's a prophet, it, many people couldn't really comprehend that. But when it comes to the children of Ashura, that doesn't really come into our head what their age was. We just humbly accept that these were role models. 
you as an adult, how are you able to take lessons from children on the day of Ashura? Yeah, I think it's, um, it, it's, it's a huge deal of, like, in a normal situation, humility would come into it, and, you know, you, you would have to reduce your ego to actually listen to um, any normal child. But when it comes to, like, the children of Karbala, um, the sacrifice that they gave themselves and the, the trials and tribulations they went through, um, you know, when, when we listen, when we even hear about it, tears just flow into our eyes, and there's a reason for those tears that are flowing. Um, it's not just... You know, you, uh, yes, of course, the tragedy of Karbala, it's, it's, a, it's a big tragedy. And, you know, the sacrifice and the enemies, the way they treated our, you know, the, the women of Mount Hussein, alayhi salam, etc., it's, it's atrocious. And in that in itself, the um, tears flow because of the, uh, you know, the atrocity of it, the, you know, the, how enemies didn't care enough. But for the children especially, you know, when you cry, these tears are saying something. They're yes. not just... Um, you know, just crying for no reason. There's, the, you know, these tears hold weight. They hold uh, weight of the sacrifice that they did. They hold weight of the, f you know, the lessons that they gave us through that sacrifice. You know, so when it came to, um, you know, say the Ruqayya, for example, um, innocent, innocent girl, but even though she, of course, you know, she would have known in the, in that sense of having that elm, etc. Or maybe she doesn't. You know, uh, you know, Allah Kareem on that one. But it's the. Uh, vibe, I guess she would have got that. You know, whatever's happening to her, it's happening, uh, and she's helping her dad in, mm. in whatever way it was. It's you know, if you bring it down to an innocence level, you're helping your dad do whatever he did. You saw your father pass away in front of you, and now you and then you know the enemies are continuing their um, uh, atrocities on you. But you know that it's something you're doing to help your father, who was doing it to help Islam, who was doing it for the sake of Allah Subhanahu mm. wa Taala. So. If, a, again, somebody, like a four, four, five-year-old girl can do something like that, um, you know, the respect level is or, like, already mm. way, way above anything what, what we can do. Mm. So automatically, um, that level just it yeah. goes up. I mean, there are, if, if you want to go on YouTube, you see some uh, little kids reciting the Quran in the most beautiful voice, mm -hmm. and then you see Bukharij, Tajweed. I'm not at that level, but mm. I look at that boy and be like, wow, Inspires. I can learn. Mm from that kid. So similarly, obviously, with the children of Karbala, it's at a much bigger level, uh, but it's the same kind of concept. Mm, absolutely. Um, in honor of the children of, uh, that were present in Karbala on the day of Ashura and afterwards, um, as per usual with the format of the show, we're going to have a short section of poetry recited by Brother Tahir uh, in honor of these children. So after the tragedy of Karbala, for centuries on end, we would flock in our millions to Mount Hussein, but there was one specific journey which was the reverse, where Mount Hussein had a partial visit to one specific person, and that's Sayyid Raqqaya. And so this poem focuses on her close relationship with her father, and her sadness and confusion, and the innocence of this child, and how they approach a situation like this. So she would say, Every morning I fell asleep to the smell of him, a star <coughs> smiled from above. But no star has the nerve to shine nor watch me cry tonight. All my stars disappeared that day. He was always here mid-screen, sheltering me like a dream within a dream. But these nights only darkness would settle my heart to sleep. That and silence, with my infant brother buried deep, no thirsty smile to kill the loneliness. I remember when my father left the tents, carrying him small and innocent. My baby brother would tilt his head and look up at him, like how I did at every moment. And he would smile, and when he'd smile, his tongue would shiver with nothing to hold it. But no matter how hurt my father was, he would always return it. Returning the smile was all he could offer him. Now though I cannot see or feel my father's gentleness, just heads upon spears. With my eyes swimming in tears while the air inherits his scent as it smothers me to sleep. Every night my tears race down, gliding past lips that once slept under the candles of his eyes, dripping onto fingers that he once kissed. All I want is a glimpse. If anybody knew where my father was, it would be my uncle, right? My uncle was the pride of my father. He would say, I need no army but Abbas. He did not need his father's double-edged sword to be great for his double helix DNA moved him like the shadow of Ali in battle and raised him like a moon in the cascades of darkness. So much so he was called the Hashemite moon, Qamar Bani Hashim. If anybody could save me from my father, uh, save me, save me, 
It would be the lion, the son of the lion. Nobody can kill him. My uncle left for water. When he's back, I'll tell, him, I'll tell him of all this slaughter. I'll tell him how brave men lined up one by one to pledge allegiance in their throats in one, and how the time came for our family to follow. I'll tell him how Akbar left and returned with a spear in his chest. I'll tell him how Qasim went into battle as Hassan's heir, and how all my beloved are now slain everywhere. I'll tell him how much my auntie needs, how much my auntie needs him there to hold her with his strong hands and unshackle my chains and, uh, chains and for him to stare into the eyes of our captors because nobody can stare into the eyes of Qamar Bani Hashim without fear. But what is this I hear? A bat and arrow, your hands, uncle, are you here? Silence is my only reply, the walls my only friends as they echo my screams back to me. Thank you. Um, Sheikh, let's go back to um, the day of Ashura itself. Um, from a historical perspective, my question is twofold now. Is number one, how, roughly, can we get an estimation of how many children were present on the day of Karbala? And secondly, did Imam actually mention them and talk about them to the um, passers by? Because you mentioned uh, in Mecca and Sayyid Moshe mentioned as well that they were clearly visible, but did he actually talk about them um, to, to the enemy forces? In terms of the numbers of the children attending Karbala, there were, seems to be in dozens because the tent was filled with children calling Al Atash Al Atash. Mm -hmm. They were calling for water. And that's why Al Abbas السلام, went to bring water for the children. So it was a huge number of children um, um, attended uh, Karbala. Um, I have some statistics with regard to um, those who were killed within. Including the adults, of course. Please. Um, from Imam Hussein's sons, three of them were killed, so three people. Imam al Hassan, four, alayhi salam. The sons of Aqil, 12, and the sons of Jafar, four. In overall, including Bani Hashim and, and Al Abi Talib, in overall, there were 33 within uh, this purified family uh, were killed. And many of them were children as well, from the infant to Al Qasim to. Um, even the the girls and mm. who were killed, and those who were who passed away later. Of course, we have a narration with regard to the journey from uh, Karbala to Kufa and Kufa to Sham. That on their way from uh, Kufa to Sham, they passed through Lebanon, and specifically the city of Baalbek. Yeah. When one of the daughters of Al Hussein alayhi salam, she became ill and she passed away, and she is now buried in Baalbek, in, in Lebanon, with the name of Khawla. Uh, there's a shrine there, the women visit that shrine. Also, when they entered uh, the, uh, Syria, they passed through the city of Halab. Uh, also, the Imam had a wife who was uh, pregnant, um, she miscarried. Uh, that child, they named him Muhsin or Muhassin. Now in, in that uh, region, they call him Sheikh Muhassin mm. uh, for the memory of Muhsin oh, of wow. Fatima al Zahra okay. salam, who was miscarried between the door and the wall when she was crushed by her enemies. And uh, of course, when they reached Sham again, uh, they placed in a uh, abandoned location, Kharabat al Sham next to the palace of Yazid. Uh, again, Sayyid al was uh, mm. the last child to be, uh, okay. to see, to face death, basically. Thank you. Um, Brother Thai, you had a second part of the poem, which we would like to hear from you complete, please. So they say, the walls my only friends as they echo my screams back to me. Until that moment came, men drew near with an object held up to me. I sat upon my cold feet to see what they had brought for me. I want no gifts. No food to settle this empty void. I just want my whispered memories to come to life instead. And there they showed me on a platter my answered wish, they said. And so I stared into his saddened pupils, back and forth, wishing I could disappear, altogether in his blood-drenched eyes until the morning prayer. I can hear his eyes singing, Ruqayya, I know how much you miss me, dear. I can feel the shivers of your tiny heart, but I'm only a dream away. So dream your way back into my arms. The garment of my soul wrapped around his head. I cried into his wounds and breathed him in. 
until death released me from this embrace as I dreamt my tiny soul away. And there I was back into his arms, and there beside him my uncle stood like a mountain he was, carrying the water two hands as promised, one hand to quench me and one to quench the souls. Bain al Haramain. Thank you. Um, Sayyid Mawson, just to close with a few remarks, um, could you just shed some light upon, um, we can't explain them all, but some of the atrocities that did take place in the children post Ashura? Um, particularly, the, obviously, the, the, the female children of Imam Al Hussein. I'll try not to be as, too graphic, but it was as bad as you could, you could imagine. Um, first of all, they're, they're, they're all chained up together, and some of the chains didn't fit them. And because of their, their heights and everything, mm. you know, some, some were made to, and this is based on what I've heard, I haven't read this anywhere, but apparently they got the kids to line up and they chained one to the other. And because some were taller than the others, they had to tiptoe. Tip because is that why Imam Sajjad had to crouch a lot as well? Because he's chained to them as well. Well, Imam Sajjad was even, even worse. Yeah. They, I've, I've heard stories where he was pulled by a horse and then he fell on the floor and then the horse just dragged him all over the f and things like that. Um, children were, were slapped, uh, shouted at, screamed, tormented. I remember one, and uh, I mean, I'll mention it, and I'll try not to be too graphic, but when they were burning the tents, Say the Ruqayya, or say the Sakina, as they say, the, the young four year old daughter of Imam Hussein. Apparently, she was hit so hard by Shema that from that, from that moment on, she began to stutter. Because mm. she cause it had such a, I won't even say psychological, but you know, it had a physical, um, neurological, um, cognitive mm. you know, effect on her. Um, and furthermore, you know, going, going, you know, when they got into Sham, being pelted with stones mm. um, and other objects, and then even in the prisons, God knows if they were fed, mm. and, and, and the conditions that they were living in. It was, I'm, I'm not surprised, and I wouldn't be surprised if later in the future we found more tombs mm. and more burial places mm. of these children on the way from Karabakh mm. to Sham. Mm. Absolutely. And um, Brother Imran, looking even backwards at the story of the infant baby um, and I think uh, even we mentioned on a human level um, the uh, a, a baby being killed that way um, what do you think and then this is an, more of an opinion kind of question what leads a human being to be able to do that to a child I mean we've seen stories in recent years in the news and with sim similar stories where a two-year-old, six-year-old girl is kidnapped or something and, and something's done to them and they're found in a, mm. in a, in a garbage dumpster or something in, in some part of a village. Um, where do you think the human being goes so low where they're able to do this? Yeah, it, it's, it's almost, it's, it is animalistic. Yes. Um, as opposed to a, even, even being considered a human reaction anymore. Um, you know, it gets to say, we see, like you said, serial killers nowadays mm. and, you know, when... when uh, there's, there's shows and programs about them and when, when they kind of research into their psychology like why do they do certain things that they do um, and you know there's, there's a whole science behind it and but, you know it, psychologically you, 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 would, you need to be um, like finished in order to do something like that you need to be at such a, like, a low level where you care not for anybody anymore where you care, you know, nothing matters to you anymore even if you... Or the opposite where you are so desperate to gain something True. Yes. You know, you to get attention, yeah, or you, you know, or wealth, absolutely. or whatever that you would go to. It's uh, I think in Islamic ethics is called like the death of the heart, mm. uh, yeah. where the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart becomes exactly. uh, too hard. Uh, and we will uh, end on this point, this tragic point of how the children were treated. Um, we would like to thank our dear viewers from across the world for watching this show uh, on the infants and children that were present in Karbala. The one Quran verse that comes to my mind discussing this topic is when God Almighty describes the question the infant girls will ask on Judgment Day about why they were buried alive. And the simple phrase is used is for what sin were they killed? And truly this Quran verse reflects what happened to the children of Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. For what sin were they killed? For what sin were they oppressed and harassed in such a terrible manner? We would like to end our show as per usual in the format a eulogy in honor of the children of the Imam by Brother Imran. That's it. 
So um, just again a quick brief. This um, we haven't mentioned this personality in here, but he he was uh, you know son of Imam Hussein, Hazrat Ali Al Akbar Alayhi Salam. Yes. So to honor him, uh, we'll finish off with that. Inshallah. Please, Bismillah. My Imam Hussein. Uh, But I know that your chest will be pierced by the sword. For the sake of Allah, my tears I will hold. As you go to the battlefield, look back at me. Look back at me for one last time. Oh, Ali Akbar, oh, Ali Akbar. Why are you leaving me, Ali Akbar? From a newborn to the man you are today, on Muhammad's path you've never gone astray. Within you is a part of Hussein. You took my eyesight with you when you left this world with a wounded chest. Oh, Ali Akbar, oh, Ali Akbar, why are you leaving me, Ali Akbar? I have been carrying bodies all day. Now my back is broken, I can't keep it straight. Oh my son, I am tired and afraid. When you fall down on the hot sands, I won't be able to carry you. Oh Ali Akbar, oh Ali Akbar, why are you leaving me, Ali Akbar? With difficulty I reach your body. Laughing at you hurt are the enemy. You're covering your chest, please let me see. When you move your hands, I see that knife Pierced in your chest, Vavela. Oh, Ali Akbar, oh, Ali Akbar, why are you leaving me, Ali Akbar? Oh, Ali Akbar, oh, Ali Akbar, why are you leaving me, Ali Akbar? Salah ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.